16. Um, before joining Seri, she was a research fellow at the Department of Architecture and Built Environment Faculty of Engineering at the University of Nottingham, UK. As a research fellow, she worked on, on several green technology projects and industrial collaboration, including Newton Fund between the UK and Turkey on a solar-driven thermochemical heat storage, another Newton Fund uh, project between the UK and China on advanced glazing technology using semi-transparent thin film PV glazing, which has received the 2018-2019 Rush Light Responsible Product of Service Award UK and uh, Innovate UK funded project on the application of phase change materials to control Vera mites population in a beehive. She has experience assisting and supervising undergraduate and postgraduate students in various sustainable energy technologies, including solar thermal energy, thermal energy storage, and low carbon buildings. She's also one of the advisors of World uh, Renewable Energy Network and a member of World Society of Sustainable Energy Technologies. And today, Dr. Hasila will share her four year working experience as a postdoc research fellow at the Faculty of Engineering, University of Nottingham, UK. She will also share some tips on how the acad academicians uh, can work together with industries to produce high social impact research project. And she will also share some information and funding opportunities between UK and Malaysia and EU and Malaysia for researchers. Uh, without uh, further delay, let's proceed with our speaker today, Dr. Hasila. Dr. Hasila. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Uh, boleh dengar eh? Yeah. Okay, uh, boleh dengar? Okay, yeah, okay. Alright, okay. okay. Alright, okay. <laughs> uh, maaf, uh, tadi sebenarnya saya dah test dah komputer ni dia uh, okay je. Tapi bila time nak cakap pula yang ada masalah eh. <laughs> okay, uh, Assalamualaikum uh, dan salam sejahtera kepada tuan-puan, doktor-doktor um, semua. Uh, terima kasih kerana sudah hadir pada sesi talk saya pada petang ini. Uh, sebenarnya uh, saya rasa macam nak cakap saya rasa I feel very honored and I feel very humble to be invited uh, today by Dr Ain and also uh, PM Shuko from PJI uh, to give a talk uh, about my research experience in the UK. Baiklah uh, buat pengetahuan semua uh, sesi pada hari ini saya harap uh, ianya hanyalah sesi berbentuk uh, sembang santai lah ya. Eh. So sekiranya ada soalan di tengah-tengah uh, presentation saya Uh, anda semua dipersilakan untuk interrupt lah untuk tanya soalan ataupun sebagainya. Okay. Uh. Alright. Uh, saya akan buka slide saya sekarang. Okay. Alright. Uh, boleh nampak ya slide saya? Hello. Uh, slide okay, boleh clear. nampak eh? Yes, clear. Ya? Clear, clear, clear eh? very slide clear. Okay. okay. Alright. Okay, so pada hari ini saya akan um, memberi a talk regarding about my research experience in the UK. Tapi sebenarnya uh, saya dijemput hari ini oleh Dr. Ain dan juga PM Syukur uh, atas kapasiti saya sebagai bekas uh, pelajar PhD di UITM Perlis. Okay. okay, buat pengetahuan semua, uh, saya merupakan pelajar PhD PM Perlis uh, di bawah perseliaan uh, PM Dr. Muhammad Nazari Abu Bakar daripada September 2011 hingga uh, Februari 2016. 
So uh, soalan yang saya selalu dapat daripada orang ramai adalah um, mereka selalu tanya saya uh, How was your uh, Speaking English? Oh okay. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so the uh, the questions that I always receive uh, from my friends regarding my research experience uh, working um, during my PhD at UIT, UIT Empress is that um, how how was your experience uh, doing a PhD at UIT Empress? And my answer is always it was such a very good experience because um, uh, I had a very good supervisor. So he has um, trained me to become um, a skillful researcher uh, from fundamental research up to um, to practical research. So when I was doing my PhD, he taught me how to do all the wirings, pipings, how to do how to use different type of sensors, um, how to set up a data acquisition system. Um, he trained me to set up my own lab. He trained me to use uh, computer simulation, heat transfer analysis, and so many things. So I would say that uh, by the time I finished my PhD I, at UI Temple List, I got so many um, skills in me. And I, I would say that I was so eager to explore the world after I finished my PhD. So, so basically, um, I submitted my thesis in August uh, 2015. And then about a month after that, I had to follow my husband to do his PhD in Nottingham. So when I was in the UK, um, uh, when I was in the UK, I had to decide um, what I want to do with my life while waiting for my husband um, to complete his PhD. So I had two choices at that time. Uh, it's either I become a stay-at-home uh, housewife or I did something to fill in the, to make sure that there is no gap in my CV. Okay, uh, so that's how it all started. Uh, my journey uh, in looking for a job started in the UK. Okay, so, uh, so basically, uh, my presentation today, or my talk today, will, uh, comprises of two important parts. Uh, the first one is uh, on my experience as a research fellow in the UK. And the second one is on uh, research funding opportunities between UK and Malaysia, and EU and Malaysia. So um, while talking about my experience as a research fellow in the UK, I will um, slightly talk about or share about my experience uh, in writing research proposals, and also um, some of my experience um, working in a research group uh, in the UK. Okay, um, the first question that I always got when I was in the UK is that, how did I get the job? Okay, because it was very difficult. I had to compete with fresh PhD holders in the UK. Because there are so many fresh PhD holders in the UK, so I have to compete with them. So the first thing that I did was I check on uh, this website here uh, on uh, indeed.co.uk and then you click research fellow jobs and then you will find a long list of research fellow jobs and then you can try your luck by um, sending your CV to um, one of the, uh, the job opportunities of uh, university and then um, if you are lucky enough, you will get respond, but it was very difficult because of the high competition. So, and at the same time, I also couldn't go through backdoor. You know, you, you understand what I mean by backdoor, right? Uh, because I don't have any connection in the UK. Well, although I did my uh, bachelor in science in physics, but it was like um, a long story, a long time ago. And also I did my bachelor in physics, but I did my PhD in solar energy. So it is sort of like a a slightly different um, field of study. So uh, I basically do not have any connection in the UK. So what I did, uh, I sent a lot of emails to potential mentors or supervisors. Um, my email, I emphasized that the reason why I was looking for a job is not because of, um, it's not driven by uh, it's not financially driven. Uh, should I say, can I say like that? Yeah, it's not because of I want to get pay. But the reason why I want to look for a job is because I want a research experience. And I, it doesn't matter if you're not going to pay me, as long as you can give me a research experience, uh, I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to contribute 
to your research group. So basically, that's are the things uh, that I mentioned in the email. And then uh, also, I've already put a mindset that when I send all the emails, I've already put a mindset that I am ready to leave my research comfort zone. What I mean by leaving my research comfort zone is that when I was at uh, UI Tank Perlis, my PhD was on solar energy, focusing on photovoltaic thermal solar collector. Uh, but I was very lucky because when I was doing my PhD, my supervisor always encouraged me to go out uh, to attend conferences where renowned speakers, uh, expertise in various renewable energy technology would attend the conference as well. So I have exposure to different type of sustainable energy technology that exists uh, in the research world. So I was ready to leave my comfort zone, meaning that if they give me a project on um, fuel cell, for example, I'm okay for it. If they give me a project for biomass, for example, I've go I will go for it. Okay, and also, uh, if you are a fresh PhD graduate, what I mean by fresh PhD graduate is that um, what I understand, uh, PhD candidates, they can be categorized into two categories. It's either those who already have attachment with a company or a university, which means that once they leave, um, uh, once they finish their PhD, they already they, they have already secured a job. Uh, and the second group is uh, the PhD candidates like me. Okay, because uh, so basically, when after I finish my PhD, I don't have a job waiting for me, so I have to hunt for a job opportunity. So uh, the focus that you should put if you are you, if you are in my situation like that time is to is you look for a job to gain experience, right? So that's, that's the key. You have to put yourself down and then you have to be very humble and say, I want to learn more. I know I have some wishes skills, but I want to learn more, okay? Because I've, I've, I've heard stories of some friends because they already got their PhD. So they thought that they are like slightly a level higher than certain people. So they refused to, uh, to lower down themselves a bit. But I think, it's not true at all because it doesn't matter whether you have a PhD or if you don't have a PhD. If you want to get into the line, you have to bring yourself down and be humble. And once you get into the line, inshallah, everything will be easy for you. And, and again, how did I get the job? It is through lots of emails. And of course, it is, uh, we call that rezeki from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, if Allah said no, then I, I, I would not get the job. But because Allah said yes, that's a risky for me that Alhamdulillah I got the job. Okay. Now, uh, who is a research fellow? Okay, and I also um, always receive these questions from my friends or from fellow Malaysians in the UK, especially. And they ask me, uh, who is a research fellow? Yeah, okay. Who is a research fellow? Okay. Research fellow is a staff at the university. They are not research assistant. Um, they are, an academic, they are not an academic, but they are an official staff at the university, meaning that we have to pay tax, and then we have uh, received all the benefits like other staff at the university receive, and we work on a fixed term contract based on a research grant. Okay, the research culture in the UK is slightly different uh, from the research culture in Malaysia. I understand that normally in Malaysia, when you get a research grant, you, will, uh, you, will, you tend to pay your, uh, your PhD student or your master's student, right? But in the UK, it's different. Uh, normally, the PhD student, they will get a special um, role as a teaching research assistant, and they are being paid by the university itself or by the faculty. Uh, so basically, if a project leader have a research grant, they will allocate the budget to pay a postdoctoral research fellow. So the person normally must have a PhD, and it is a professional job. Uh, they will not pay uh, in other words, they are not allowed to pay student. Okay? All right. And also, uh, as a research fellow, I have to sometimes take over lectures. And I also could be appointed as a second or third supervisor to a PhD student. And basically, I work for uh, in a research group. Um, I would like to share a bit about a research group in the UK. Uh, the research group that I work with was a huge research group. Uh, basically, it comprises of 15 uh, academic staff, about 15 to 20 research fellows, and also 
about 40 to 50 PhD students. It's such a huge research group. And interestingly, in the UK, or at least where I work at Nottingham University, um, every year when it comes to um, research excellent framework time, research uh, ref is like a Myra, it's like the time where you count your Myra score or something like that. Um, we were being evaluated based on the performance of a research group. So it is very important for a research group to really perform. Okay. So, and how we are being evaluated was based on how many research grants that we have secured with the industry and how many research, uh, how many five star rating papers that we have published and a lot more um, criteria. But among the main are collaboration with industries and also a five star rating um, publication. Okay. All right. Um, research fellow is also the key person in a research project. <sighs> okay, when I talk about, it just, um, it reminds me to all the times when I had to handle projects. It's not just uh, when, it's not just doing research for the project, but I also have to handle internal meetings. I have to represent the project leaders in a meeting with project partners and the most crucial part is I have to in charge of the financial flow of the project. And it was very challenging because the job that I, uh, the projects that I had to take over, uh, sorry, that I had to manage uh, normally project with the industries. And in the UK, every three months, um, the, someone from the, uh, from the funding body will come um, and have us in a meeting room. And basically the person will track the progress of the project. So every three months, I have to make sure, so every quarter, I have to make sure that there's a good financial flow in the project and it must be in line with the project milestones and also deliverables. You are being monitored, very strictly monitored. So you cannot easily use your money and you have to make sure that you purchase your items from trusted suppliers and so on. And also, a research fellow, is also the hero to PhD students. Okay, um, this point is very interesting. Uh, when I was in Nottingham, I, I've never, it's very rare, very rare occasion for me to see academician or professors to go to the lab. Very, very, very rare, okay? Most of the time, us, the research fellows, are the one that have to help students at the laboratory, at least at where I work. Um, but it's very interesting because I also heard some from some of my Malaysian friends who do PhD in the UK. They also said that, oh yeah, I, I really depend on my postdoc. I don't know what will happen if they're not around. So basically that was one of my job scope, job scope um, as a research fellow at Nottingham. So with this, I really would like to thank my uh, former supervisor, uh, PM, my, uh, Dr. Mohamad Nazari, because when I did my PhD at UITM Police, okay, UITM Police is such a small university, right? It's not even an RU. It's a small university in a small state in Malaysia, okay? But interestingly, when I go to Nottingham, uh, which is like one of the top 100 universities right, in, in the world, maybe, um, the laboratory setting, all the equipment they use, all the sensors they use, uh, the data acquisition system, they are all, I would say, like almost 100% similar to what I have, uh, to what I had when I was at UI Templates. So I would say that uh, I still remember uh, my supervisor said to me, it's not about where you do your PhD. It's about what, how you carry out your research and how much you can contribute to the community at the end. And we have to make sure that the research that you produce is at the same level as rest of the people in the world are doing. So he was right. And uh, because um, when, I was doing, when I was working as a research fellow, I also had the opportunity to work on a project with Turkey and also a project with China. So when I went to Turkey and when I went to China, I also saw like a very similar setting of test rig with like a similar equipment, like high-end or high-class equipment. Um, very similar to the one that I used when I did my PhD. So to those students here who are doing your PhD or your master's at uh, UI Templates, uh, please feel very proud of yourself. You're, you are at the right place, okay? And I, I'm, I myself is a very proud alumni of UI Templates, okay? 
Now, I'll continue. Uh, I shouldn't talk too much about <laughs> that thing. All right. So um, I'm going to share a bit of my experience about the work culture in the UK. So basically, we um, in in the UK, people are in general are very has high integrity. Believe me or not, uh, there's no such thing as clock in or clock out. Okay, but interestingly, official working office hours strictly people will be there at 8 a.m. and they will leave like around 5 p.m. or sometimes 3 p.m. depending on their working hours. And also they have a very specific lunch break time, coffee time, and tea time. Okay, and also there's no weekend or holiday work. Speaking of no weekend and holiday work, I really, really had a culture shock when I was first arrived in North Hill. Because I was so used to working after office hours, like during weekend or holiday, not pergi masuk lab, you want to go into the lab during weekends, can It's a very Asian or Malaysian culture. But it's a no-no in the UK. Unless you get a permission, it was very difficult to get the permission. Okay? And also, the communication is strictly via work email and Microsoft Teams, meaning that there's no WeChat or WhatsApp. And then um, from laboratory perspective, yeah, the technicians and health and safety officers are the most important person. Uh, so meaning that even a professor or directors or whoever lah at the top come and try to interfere, they will not be entertained. Okay, I, I once witnessed myself there was a professor who tried to get into the lab to look for his student or his research fellow. And because he was not wearing goggles and safety shoes, the technicians said, no, you are not allowed to come in. So meaning that in the UK, it doesn't matter. Whoever you are, if you are in the, in the laboratory section, the technicians and health and safety officers are the most important people. Okay? And you have to be very, very careful with these people. Okay? And then uh, Asian versus Matsali culture. Okay, right. We know the Asian culture, we are very humble culture. We always say, okay, yes, boss. Yes, yes, boss. Okay, yes, yes, you're right. It's something that you cannot help, to be honest, right? So the pro is boss loves you very much. But the con is boss will give you more work. But as for my case, I feel very grateful because it was the chance for me to, to learn more. Okay, just imagine a very renowned professor um, give you or sharing with you lots of information and knowledge, of course you are very happy and eager, right? Okay, uh, that is in terms of work culture. Uh, now it's in terms of publication. Uh, another thing that I would like to share is, in the UK, it was very interesting, uh, at least at where I work, yeah? Okay, H-index was based on Google Scholar. So I still remember when I, one time when I wanted to apply for a scholarship of a fellowship, uh, internal fellowship in the university, and they asked me, okay, uh, can you check what is your H index? And I said, oh, it was, uh, at that time it was six. I was like, wow, that's so good. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's, that's high enough. And then I was like, oh, okay, yes, um, I was very happy. But then when I come back to Malaysia, I realized that um, uh, H index based on Google Scholar is actually not very, orang panggil tak acceptable sangat lah kan? Okay, because in Malaysia, uh, we use H index scopus, right? Okay, but tak apalah. I'm just sharing, okay, I'm just sharing. And then uh, we are free to attend any conferences as long as they are good conferences. So how to, how we make sure that it is a good conferences. So basically good conferences need, um, it was based on who are the speakers. If like, if great people, great speakers, lots of people from industry attend the conference, for us, that is a good conference. Okay, because the research culture in the UK is that or maybe I think in most developed country, is that we are looking towards uh, high societal impact uh, project, okay? Um, we want to see project that can benefit the community quicker, uh, okay? Uh, so that's the reason why conferences where lots of industries attending are considered as one of the good conferences. All right, uh, as I mentioned just now earlier, uh, that I had experience working on projects with industries. It's true. I have three year working experience altogether in the UK and also international. International was with China. And I also, uh, also this is also one of my job scope, is to write research proposals. Okay, uh, I'm just being honest here. When I say research proposal, don't imagine that in the proposal, there are my name in it. No, my name is not on the proposal. 
but whose name? Who's, the name of the people on the proposals are the name of the of my mentor, basically, of the professor, because I'm not uh, I'm not uh, because I'm a contract staff, so I'm not eligible to apply for any research grant. Okay, but still, I've I worked really hard working on more than twenty research proposals for my boss. Okay, and it was a very 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 useful experience. And it involves, uh, it's mainly involving industries. Okay, when I mention industries here, okay, in the UK, uh, when there, whenever there's an involvement of industry in the project, meaning that the companies or the industry, they have to pay certain amount of money or they have to contribute like certain fraction of money into the project. Okay, for example, if their total budget that they get is £100,000, they have to pay 30% of that. All right, so it is, it was actually a very serious involvement of industries, okay? Because whatever that involved money, it becomes serious, right? Okay? Uh, some of the examples of the project that I wrote is on greenhouse, drawing system, district heating, heating, hybrid, smart system, and all that. And I would like to emphasize here that most of them are applied and multidisciplinary research, okay? For a scientist and academic researcher like me, it was very challenging. I'm a physicist, I'm a scientist. I want to do fundamental research. I want to do something which is like more, how, how should I say, like more heat transfer, okay? Or if you are in, uh, if you are a, chemistry, a chemist, for example, you would like to do something which use SEM device, for example. You want to use the DSC machine to, to calculate what calorimetric value and so all that. But no, for a scientist and academic researcher, it's very challenging because the project must have, um, you must show that there's a profit that the industry can gain from it, okay? Uh, but mostly they are all high social, economic and national impact project, okay? Um, and then, yeah, and also there's another um, disadvantage for a researcher like me is that uh, it is, they got less chance, chance to publish paper, okay? But more on pattern. Uh, I believe that uh, most of you here are very familiar about pattern application. Uh, you, as I think all of you are aware that whenever we publish a paper and then if we file our pattern afterwards, then our published paper will be considered as prior art. So that's the reason why um, my mentor especially and also the project partners, they are very, very, they are very strict when it comes to publication, right? So what I did, what I did, okay? But we have to be clever. So what I did, normally, I would discuss with my mentor to use a bit of the research grant uh, funding and to do a bit of um, fundamental research element out of it, okay? So from there, I can at least publish some simple paper uh, for conferences uh, and all that, okay? All right, so I'm giving an example of a project Okay, this is uh, this was me when I was doing a project on uh, a sustainable method to control varroa mites in a beehive. Okay, it's very interesting uh, because it's a project about a beehive, but involving someone from sustainable energy background. And not only that, okay, first it involves beekeepers or bee scientists. Okay, so basically in this project, we have invited a few beekeepers in the UK to join with us. Um, and also, it, in, we have involved B scientists from the faculty of, not biology faculty, there's another name, but um, from people with from biology background in Nottingham University. So these people, they basically, they provide advice and they give us recommendation to us, the sustainable energy technologies, to invent or develop a heating system uh, that can produce temperature recommended by the bee scientists. Okay, so, um, so basically, uh, our team, we had to develop a technology, a sustainable energy technology that can produce heat that can kill the mites in the beehive, right? Um, but in order for us to set up the sensors and to monitor the system, okay, because... Um, the bee scientists, they want like certain temperature, for example, it must be between 14 and 50. So as sustainable energy technologists, we produce something. But then we need the computer scientists and electrical engineers 
to do something, uh, uh, to do a monitoring system that can let us control the system from far. Okay, uh, it was very interesting because it involves um, uh, companies and also um, scientists from different background, from the scientists, sustainable energy technology, and also computer scientists. And also, in the future, uh, we are planning to involve a so social science people so they can help us to calculate the ROI, to make a business model, or to educate the potential end users. Okay, so this is an example, one of the projects that I did that involves a multidisciplinary research. It was very interesting. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, here are some of uh, my photos uh, from my research experience in the UK. So from the left hand side, it was a picture of me with my three fellow technicians, my three technicians. Uh, at the beginning of the, my time at Nottingham, I was actually not on a good term with them because of the clash of culture in terms of work. But towards the end, the second, third and fourth year, we were like, like best friends, okay? And then uh, there's also a picture of me attending a meeting in China. Okay, because when I was doing a project with China, I was working on a thin film technology. Uh, it was a very interesting project because it involves a big company in China called Hanergy. Right, Hanergy is like one of the big producers of thin film TV technology. So when I was there, I had to discuss and meet, I had a meeting with um, the people there uh, about the project. And we also have won an award because of the project and we've made like a prototype that sort of like the first in the world <laughs> okay and these are some of my pictures from my beehive project <sighs> okay uh at the meantime i was wondering if uh, any of you has any questions before i proceed to the next um topic of my presentation any question no okay I can continue. All right. Uh, okay. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, research funding opportunities between UK and Malaysia. I think um, most of you here are familiar with Newton Fund institutional links. Okay, but uh, Newton Fund um, is not the the call is not very frequent. Okay, um, but there are two types of calls uh, between uh, from UK which I think it, it, they are quite frequent. And I think um, if, if any of you are interested, you can have a look and I will show you here. Oops, this one. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So this is uh, the International Collaboration Awards. This one, okay, take note. Okay, these international collaboration awards, they will open the call every year. So recently, they just uh, closed the call recently. And UKM, uh, someone from Surrey UKM, um, I've worked together with them and also with my former colleague in Nottingham to produce one research proposal. So I think um, uh, people in UITM, if you are interested, you can also have a look, uh, start preparing your proposal from now. Because uh, the call is actually, uh, is quite simple to prepare. The, the proposal. Um, the only, um, how should I say, the only charade, the only, uh, but uh, in order for you to be eligible uh, to apply for the grant, you must have at least eight years of research experience. So don't worry if you are new researchers or new staff at the university, if you still have not have like eight years of research experience, it's okay. Maybe you can work together with your colleague that have like more than eight years experience. What you can do is you can build your own team because uh, in the International Collaboration Award, there is a section that you must clearly emphasize that you have a team uh, in Malaysia to work uh, on the project. Okay, so the next call will open in January 2021. So everyone, you can have a look and try. And the second one is the Challenge-led grants. Okay, this one, it also opened almost every year, I think if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but it also already closed for this year. So I think uh, all of you, if you want to give it a try, you can um, always check this website. Yeah, yeah? it's uh, the Royal Society Research Grant. Okay. Uh, all right. So as for master's, PhD, fellowships, scholarships, huh? 
Um, I think all of you are familiar with Shivening Scholarships. All right. And there's another one that I would like to share here is the scholarship um, funded by the Royal Society. It is for those uh, in a mid-career, oh, sorry, uh, these are for those who are early career researcher, okay? Uh, but the but those who already have a job, for example, those who already attached to a university, um, you are not eligible to apply for this. This is designed for, uh, sorry, let me open it Oops, again. Uh, right, so this is designed for those uh, fresh PhD graduates who do not have job waiting for them after they finish their PhD. Right, so if you have a PhD student or yourself is a PhD student who are in this category, please have a look because this one is open to any nationalities. So anyone can apply, okay? Uh, but uh, yeah, but uh, the, the work or the job must be carried out in the UK. All right. And um, next for a PhD student, all right. Uh, another scholarship that you can look into is the scholarship from Islamic Development Bank Scholarship. Okay, I have a few friends who have, uh, who used this, who, who was funded by this um, scholarship to do their PhD in the UK, right? So you can have a look here if you are, have any plan to study abroad or to study in the UK, you can have a look here and apply for the scholarship, okay? And then uh, next one is Commonwealth Scholarships, okay? Later on, you can also Google and search. There are also scholarships for PhD students. And last but not least is UK University Scholarships. Go to any universities that you are planning to do your PhD at or that you feel like you want to try your nasib or try your luck. You can go to the universities and send your CVs and make sure they are tip-top CVs or your proposals. And if there's a Rizuki for you, inshallah, you will get them. I also know a few students in Nottingham who was sponsored by a Nottingham University Scholarship. So it's possible as far as uh, there's uh, a, uh, a wheel, okay? All right, and the next uh, research funding opportunities that I would like to share is the research funding opportunities between EU and Malaysia, okay? In general, uh, there are various research funding, um, but uh, normally the, the, okay, hello? Okay, but normally um, the technological readiness level of the project must be between three and eight, okay? And I would like to show here, oh, sorry. okay? All right, cool. so this is the web page for the Horizon 2020 project, uh, research funding. Okay, please bear in mind, starting from next year, they will have a new name. It is called Horizon Europe, uh, Horizon Europe. Okay, because Horizon 2020, 2020 will end this year. So they will have a new name. Okay, over here, okay, there are so many uh, research opportunities, uh, research grant opportunities that you can search. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, give me a moment. I would like to show you. Tengah loading data. Okay, tak All right, so basically if you go to this website, you will be able to search your field here, okay, and then let's say you don't have a research partner, okay, so th uh, this is an example of the research uh, grant opportunities. This is in the field of low carbon. Uh, there are many other fields like big data or whatever, or GIS, even GIS, I checked yesterday, yeah, the time, okay, um, there are so many uh, potential research grant opportunities, okay, but the thing is, with Horizon 2020 or Horizon Europe, you must have partners in European countries, all right? But if you don't have any partners or you don't have any network, don't worry because you can click here. You can click on partner search. Why don't you try your luck? Okay, if you, are, if you have the willingness of, if you have like, if you feel like, oh, I wanna, I wanna give it a try. Okay, why not? Okay, what you can do is you can click here, partner search, and you can search your, um, the people or the, sorry, the organization in which matches uh, your field of research and then you can try contact them and try propose 
uh, a proposal with them. Okay? All right. Uh, and the second one is this specifically um, Marie Curie actions, Marie Klodowska Curie actions. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry if I mispronounced the word Klodowska, I'm not sure to pronounce that. Okay, Marie Curie actions grants. This is for all stages of researchers' careers, even PhD students. Okay, um, I'm not sure whether it is okay for me to talk further about this or not, but if you are interested, I strongly encourage all of you who are researchers to apply for this research grant. And again, if you don't have any networking or partners or potential partners that you know in European countries, European countries is big, eh? it could be German or not only UK. UK actually already Brexit, okay? So try about UK, okay? For example, like German or Holland or whatever, go to the website and click research, uh, find partner, okay? And then, uh, because with this Mary Curie actions, all right, for the individual fellowship, okay, focus on the individual fellowships, there are three types. The standard European, uh, normally two years, and the, the career restart panel. This is uh, especially for those who have a long maternity leave, for example, because in the Europe, they normally get up to two years of maternity leave. Okay, And then last one is global fellowships. Okay, This is open for all of these, all the research grants that I talked just now are open for this one, okay, Marie Curie, open for any nationalities. I would like to emphasize again, it open to any nationalities. Right, for the global fellowship especially, it is two year uh, abroad, uh, uh, sorry, two year in any of the European countries, and one year you have to come back to your university and you have to sort of like give whatever that you have learned or gained when you were abroad. So I think for the global fellowship, you can like clearly see a connection between University A in Malaysia and partners in the UK, okay? Oh, sorry, in the Europe. Okay. So um, this Marie Curie, right? Uh, give me a moment. Right, they are currently open their call, okay? Um, and the deadline is this September. So if you cannot um, follow this year deadline, you can sort of like get ready uh, for the next round of calls, okay? All right. Okay. Uh, Haya, this one. Uh, okay. Uh, can I put yeah? uh, why The reason why I talk about this uh, Mary Curini, the reason is like this. When I was in Nottingham, you remember just now I said that I had to write research proposal, right? Interestingly, I also had to write research proposal for the potential researchers that are coming to do um, uh, the American Curie at Nottingham University. I'm helping them, okay? And when I was at Nottingham University, I think there were like two or three uh, researchers from China who managed to get the scholarships, or sorry, the fellowship, meaning that it is possible. It is possible for someone outside Europe to get the, the fellowship. So, and I know that there are so many outstanding uh, researchers or scientists in Malaysia, right? As a research, not only scientists, sorry, uh, researchers in Malaysia. So why don't we try? Why don't us Malaysians try uh, this fellowship as well? And they give a lot of money with a living allowance of almost 500, sorry, 5,000 euro per month. Uh, you got mobility allowance, you got family allowance, and then you got research training and working costs. And at the same time, you, ask, you still can work for the university that you are working with in Malaysia. So why don't you give it a try, okay? Uh, because I have some experience writing research proposal for Marie Curie, I cannot, unfortunately, I cannot give you the proposal because it's because of confidentiality, but I sort of can give some advice or tips and tricks if you want to write the proposal, okay? So you can contact me uh, later if you are interested. All right, so I almost uh, come towards the end of my um, presentation, uh, my talk today. Uh, okay, so if you ask me, should I do postdoc or should I like try my luck to do to become a research fellow in the UK or Europe? Okay, if you are a fresh, if a PhD graduate like me, when I was I mean like like when I was uh, finish my PhD, I would like to strongly suggest yes. Why not? Give it a try. You will experience like different cultural and scientific uh, research culture there, okay? And also you can further enhance your research skills. Okay, like I mentioned just now, um, also like uh, my supervisor uh, told me before this, when I did my PhD, um, actually when you do your PhD, it is about 
uh, going for a training. Okay, you are trained to be a, a researcher. So when you do a postdoc, you are actually um, sort of like helping yourself to further enhance your research skills. And also it is to find your research identity. Okay, because when I was in the UK, uh, yeah, so I was given like different kind of projects. I was exposed to different kind of things, can I say that? You can do a kind of research project. So it was actually a very good time for me to find my research identity. I mean, like what I do, what do I really want to focus when I go back to Malaysia for good? Okay. Um, but uh, things are not always beautiful. There are challenges. The first one is the communication. Okay. Uh, it was uh, communication was um, very challenging for me at the beginning. Okay, and then different work culture, you must be very confident and outspoken. Just imagine, okay, an Asian researcher sitting in a meeting room full of Mat Saleh. And then you have to present the project, okay? Of course, of course, uh, it was very challenging. You have, you have to prove, you have to show that you know things, that you are, you are, that you deserve to be in that room. Okay, so it was very challenging at first. I was very nervous at first, but as time go on, it was fine. And then time and financial management. Okay, childcare in the UK or in abroad is in general very expensive, especially if your children are below four years old. Okay, so you have to be very, uh, you have to you have to plan. Okay, if you decided to have a baby in the UK, but or if you decide to have a small kid in the UK, it's not not really advisable because for us foreigners um, if we work although we work in the UK it will although we pay tax but we are not eligible for uh, for special fundings from them so childcare can cost up to 800 pounds a month okay so you have to be you have to plan very well okay uh, now uh, comes to the end of my talk uh, now um, I am working at Solar Energy Research Institute International, uh, at University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Okay, actually, I just returned from UK in December and Alhamdulillah, uh, I have been given a chance to work at Solar Energy Research Institute. Okay, over there, we also conduct world-class research and we have worked actively to create and disseminate knowledge to research and development. And at Surrey, we also have uh, some research facilities um, in, in renewable energy technology. Okay, so we are open for any potential collaboration. And if you would like to um, collaborate with me in the future for to become a to course supervised student, for example, I'm open um, with any uh, potential collaboration in the future. And yeah, I think uh, I guess that's all for today. And I would like to open um, this opportunity for Q and A. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Hasila, for sharing your wonderful experience and very good tips, information about the opportunity on the research grant and collaborations. Okay. So, uh, any question from the floor? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Rahayu, but I can I cannot hear you clearly. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, I cannot hear sorry. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, Dr. Rahayu? Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot hear you. No, uh Actually, uh, I'm the moderator and I open the question to the floor. If any question, if any question to ask the oh, okay. Dr. Hasila. Okay. Uh, Dr. Hasila, uh, the question from uh, Dr. Shuko. How can we, you I think, please okay, have that's a collaboration? Okay, from uh, Dr. Shuko here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we are open for a potential co any potential collaboration with uh, UiTM Police. Okay. 
So um, we can collaborate in the future, maybe uh, through uh, research funding. Uh, so sorry, for, uh, through proposal application. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm sure go. All right. So basically, yeah, we can have. Um, of course, there's a in the future, but there's a potential. Uh, there's a potential that we can collaborate together um, in potential projects because uh, renewable energy is actually um, a field of study. Uh, sorry, the other way around. Uh, computer science, eh? Or oh, I think you are from big data analysis background. Um, it is actually have a potential to collaborate in almost any field of research uh, that exists out there. Okay, so of course, yeah. Right, uh, other questions? Uh, Dr. Sila, I have a question. I have a question. Okay. Uh, could yeah. you share uh, what is the secret uh, or tips to win uh, international uh, grant and what how or what is the best tips to writing a winning grant uh, for international? Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I cannot hear very clearly. Hello? Uh, what, is the here, yeah. and, what is the secret and tips to winning an uh, international grant? Could you share some tips? Okay, what is the secret uh, to create a link with uh, international universities, yeah? Okay, uh, all right. Um, uh, the secret is, oh yes, I, I forgot to mention, all right? The secret is that for the research proposal, that especially um, from UK or uh, with EU, they must, uh, they are mostly research proposal that have a high uh, potential for high social, economic and national impact. Okay, so if the research is too fundamental, okay, uh, it's very difficult for us to come up with the a very effective uh, social or economic impact am i right this is a fact this is a fact all right a fundamental research is normally is very easy for us to come up with the academic impact because we contribute to the new knowledge we are uh, contribute to the knowledge of people that understand what we are doing okay basically right but if you want to carry out research uh, to have uh, international collaboration you must come up with a research that have a strong, um, that you can clearly see what are the benefits for the social, what are the benefits for the economy. I'm giving you an example, okay? Uh, an example is, uh, for example, it's a greenhouse system that can help the poor people to grow crops efficiently, right? It sounds simple, but it's actually not because it can involve researchers from agricultural background. It can involve researchers from uh, science, science uh, sorry, from uh, solar energy background, for example, and it also can involve researchers from computer science background. So it's a multidisciplinary research, but it has a huge impact uh, to the social uh, and also to the environment uh, and also to economy. Okay, in other words, it's sort of like applied research, but it also still has some balance of innovation and um, innovation and fundamental um, knowledge in there, yeah. Okay, I hope it's, it answers your questions. Okay. Uh, sorry, Dr. Sila, since you are working with Suri, do you have any data related to energy consumption? <laughs> okay, uh, Dr. Shuko, eh? since I work with Suri, do I have any data related to energy consumption? Okay, uh, I think we can uh, discuss um, after this, I think I don't have to work with Suri to have any data related to energy consumption. I can uh, give some advice how you can get data to energy consumption. If you ever heard of uh, this uh, building simulation software called IES, for example, or, uh, or Energy Plus, 
we can actually easily uh, simulate um, the amount of energy consumption of a building. Or I also can uh, share with you how we can easily um, calculate uh, the energy consumption of a building from a simple heat energy balance equation. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Shuko, yeah, of course, your team can have a visit to Surrey later. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's a project uh, that involves UITM Police and Surrey at the moment, LRGS. Um, and I think you're also one of the members, right? So, of course, yeah. Any uh, more questions? Okay, other question? I'm sorry, because I cannot hear any question. Yeah. So that's like you mentioned that it is hard to work with during the first year. Can you elaborate more, more on that? Okay. Okay. Uh, it's hard to work with during the first year. Uh, of course, it's, it's mainly because of the uh, different culture. Okay, us Malaysians, we are all us Asians, we have the tendency to what bagi boleh Kita kena bagi boleh right? And we also have this kind of spirit in us that we want to work really hard and to get things done on time, right? But in the UK. It's completely different. People work based on the time allocated for them. So whether they have completed their work or not, it doesn't matter for them. Okay? Uh, I'm talking uh, from the perspective of a lab work, for example. Okay? Sometimes I have work to complete by um, Monday. And because of that, I have to enter the lab during the weekend. No, but I couldn't do that. So, like, among, uh, and also, they don't like to be contacted after office hours. So it's also like one of the challenges. And also, when I work with the uh, industrial partners, who are all of them, uh, how should I say, uh, are all British, okay? They are Malay, memang pure Masale, memang pure British. It was difficult because I was a foreigner. I try to talk, I try to give instruction to foreigners. I try to explain things to foreigners. Uh, sorry, sorry. I try to uh, explain things or I try to give instruction to the local people. Okay? So what I had to do is I had to to create my, how should I, how should I say, like sort of like uh, a character that at the end they would listen to me and they would believe with what I said. Okay? So so that was like among the challenges at the beginning of uh, uh, my first year in the UK as a research fellow. Okay. Uh, another question. Okay. Uh, is there any research related with mathematics and solar? Oh dear. Of course. Okay. Of course. Like even my, uh, of course, uh, even my um, PhD research. Um, has like mathematical modeling in it. Uh, I also know students or, or some researchers who studied about statistics uh, in a solar energy prediction. Um, I'm not sure uh, if mathematics is quite broad, right? So I'm not sure like which mathematics that you are like uh, focusing about. But in general, yes, of course, yes. Mm. And besides, mathematics is the language of physics, so it's definitely, yeah, there's... Yeah. Is there any other questions? From the audience? Okay, all right. I'm sorry, I think there's an issue with my uh, speaker. Yeah. Okay, uh, any other question? I cannot hear. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. 
Okay, uh, I think uh, that's all for, for the session. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Hasila. Can, can you hear me, Dr. Hasila? Dr. Hasila? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the, thank you for your sharing. Thank you for the session. And for all the audience, uh, thanks for all your contribution. And don't forget to fill in uh, the attendance form. And you will get, uh, you will get your ESET for today's session. Okay. okay. Thank you. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Asila. Okay, thank you. So if you got, if any of you have any questions, or like two more tips and tricks to write research proposals, be okay. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. Yes, I am more okay. than happy to help. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Asila. All right. Okay, thank you. If not, I will Okay. I'm not. Okay. All right. So, um, can I leave? No. Okay. Thank you. And all the best. Okay. Okay, thank you everybody.